A fetus is not more important than a woman and does not have control over her body. I saw a video where a man begs his wife to not have an abortion outside the clinic. While it may be an actor, the comments are absolutely disgusting and reek of insecurity and possession. A man doesn't have a say in abortion because it's not his body. It's not his body that's being ripped open, leaving permanent damage and the possibility of severe medical conditions. It's not him who gets to decide if she doesn't want to die from childbirth. Congrats, you and someone and the fetus shares some DNA, but you're not the one doing the rest of the work and suffering for nine months or up to 18 plus years, depending on the situation. If I get pregnant and forced to give birth, my body will be destroyed. I have old injuries to my skull, shoulder, spine, and hips, which have lifelong pain in the joints between vertebrae. I have chronic nerve or muscle pain and headaches from a TBI that fractured a large part of my skull and behind my eye. I'm bipolar too, have anxiety, PTSD, and a quote-unquote mother who is schizophrenic. I could suffer much worse for the rest of my life and end up in a wheelchair with chronic headaches, all for some cells that aren't wanted. I would have a chance of having postpartum depression and psychosis. My mental health would decline. My will to live would be gone. I wouldn't be me anymore. But none of that matters because people I don't know want those cells to grow because they believe those cells are already a baby. Anyway, that's just one big reason I'm child-free. Sorry if this was a bit long. These guys have such a weird pregnancy and control fetish. You know they wouldn't take care of their own kids. Makes me think of that one legal advice post from a few years ago. Dude got a chick pregnant, somehow convinced her to keep it, but with the caveat that she was going to be doing the quote-unquote sign away rights and dip move, more typical of dads in this case. She did exactly that, and two years on, the dad was decidedly unhappy with his decision and wanted to go to court to try and make her take partial custody of the kid. Everyone called him a tool and all, but begged the dude to give the kid up for adoption before being raised by such a resentful butt face made irreversible impacts on the kid. He even called her a quote-unquote deadbeat mom, even though she paid 125% of child support to the ungrateful sack of crap, and it still wasn't enough for him. He was also furious that she was working on her body and doing amazing while he was struggling with the child he forced her to bring into this world. I hope he's still miserable. LOL, indeed. Thanks for the laugh. And I agree 100%. I hope that Fricker is miserable as well. And you have all the men who whine, it's not fair when we say they shouldn't get a say. No, it's not fair. Because of biology, it's not. Until they find some way to be able to artificially incubate in an artificial uterus or something, it's going to be that way. Want things to be more quote unquote fair? Support research into that rather than force your desires on our bodies. I mean, do you think it's fair to make someone sacrifice their physical, mental, and emotional health for a fetus she doesn't even want? That's the thing. Biology isn't fair. I don't hear men complaining on our behalf when women get the crap end of the biological stick. It's not fair that we are naturally weaker or that we have to deal with periods in pregnancy, but that's just how it is. I love how there is one time where biology gives women a right that men don't have, and all of a sudden, it is a problem. Men will never, ever have equal say in whether women get abortions, not until they have equal chance of getting pregnant. If men were the ones that got pregnant, abortion would be legal worldwide. This... Yes, this, well said. Also, the fetus can't survive without the woman, which means it's part of our body until it's born, right? Prioritizing the person over the parasite should be common sense. Edit to clarify, parasite is an analogy, I don't mean it literally. If it's not viable outside the uterus, it's not a human being. That's why I hate the heartbeat laws and crap. Also, heartbeat or lack of heartbeat does not indicate death, so why should it indicate life? If you got an adult and they're flatlining, you don't just say, oh, they're dead. No, you do CPR and give medications and stuff until the brain is dead. Once the brain is dead, you call time of death, I think. But you don't call time of death when the heart stops, unless it's stopped long enough for the brain to die. Yes, the fetus isn't its own person until it's born. And that whole heartbeat at six weeks is bullcrap. Nurses have said that a lot of the time it's just electrical pulses, not a heartbeat. I just don't understand it. They have made it essentially impossible considering most pregnancies usually aren't detected until week six to eight, unless you are looking for it. 
Most women will pass this point, and if they don't, it doesn't give them a lot of time to make that decision. It's so ridiculous to me when men do this. Like, just go and someone who wants to have a baby. It's not that hard. Acting like they created some miracle? Like, congratulations, you... For real. Laughing, laughing, laughing. LMAO, I'm dying. You are so on point. You... Now everyone is in possession of my body? How about frick off? How about some freaking basic human rights? That's just so, so dumb. Some countries and people there are going backwards. Because they want women to suffer. The cruelty is the point. Even dead people have more autonomy over their bodies than us women. At least it's better than Polish women have it for another year, or at least here in the US. They can't even abort because of severe birth defects. It's got to be verifiable rape, or you have no hope. Oof. What if I told you even in death, women's bodily autonomy is taken advantage of? What male embalmers or funeral directors will do is suture the breast together from areola to areola or a little higher, so the descendant's breasts will look more perky and appealing. That's right, ladies. Even in death, men will take advantage and sexualize our bodies. Right down to making sure we have more of a smile in comparison to the deceased male counterparts. That video, the guy didn't even know the woman, and I'm pretty sure the guy was an actor. Actor or not, the worst is in the comments section. Those are the people to worry about. I will listen to a man complain about his lack of fetus rights for the exact same number of times I've previously heard him complain he doesn't get period cramps and or how much he envies single moms. Never had a man beat them odds yet. I had an argument with a man who quote unquote supports abortion and disagrees with the new Texas law but wanted to make clear that he believes a father would have a choice as to whether an abortion occurs. And I was like, so you don't support abortion? And he's like, no, I do, but two people made the baby. Two people should decide to keep or terminate. So basically, once again, men controlling women's bodies. It's funny how these same types are against paying half the medical bills of the birth and costs during the pregnancy. Then they sign away their rights right after the birth and pay the minimum, if anything. So then, what if it's a split decision? Do they flip a coin? Exactly. Usually the argument is, if the man wants to keep it, then the woman should carry it and then sign away her rights. Like, that's just as bad as the government forcing a woman to carry a fetus to term. I'm sorry, but the pregnant person is the only one that should be allowed to decide what to do with their own goddamn body. Then men use the same argument to excuse men for being deadbeats and women having to be single moms because a man wanted an abortion. If he didn't want children, he would use protection and get sterilized or better yet save themselves for Jesus like they preach in school. It doesn't freaking matter if a fetus is a person or not, if the existence of a person or whatever else puts you at 100% risk of getting your body and or your life destroyed, you are 100% allowed to kill them. Nobody owns their happiness to anyone, especially not a stranger that isn't even born yet. Why is it that people can kill in self-defense, but they can't have an abortion to save themselves from completely deteriorating financially, physically, and mentally, and even death? Hypothetical question, would abortion be more okay if it was performed with a gun and one claimed self-defense? Even if you killed it yourself, you can be charged with fetal homicide. I was going to draw a parallel to the stand your ground laws in the US, which have basically allowed people to murder. People act like they care so much about the baby. Never the person who has to carry it, I say we are more important. And only care until it's born then they're back to being obsessed with IVF and ignoring the problems that these poor kids get stuck in or age out of the system face and also ignoring the flaws in CPS that leaves kids in abusive homes. I find it ironic they pretend to care about quote unquote potential life while completely dismissing and destroying and ripping off all human rights of the life, the person who already exists. Just read the pro-life subreddit, quote unquote for fun. I'm very pro-choice and just had an abortion from accidental pregnancy three weeks ago. The amount of Redditors with quote unquote pro-life Christian as their tagline who were touting the death penalty for women who get abortions. Yeah, so quote unquote pro-life. Not to mention the men who had a 50% fault in the pregnancy get off scot-free. While of course the women are hung laughing. These people can't be reasoned with idiots 
They just want to control our bodies. They don't give a frick about the baby once it's born. They're so pro-life, they want to kill people who actually exist. LOL, right? The logic does not exist. <laughs>